The film opens with two middle-aged men, Citizen and Hadley, strolling through a building, chatting casually about everyday life matters like marriage and family. Meanwhile, a young woman in a lab coat attempts to warn them about an incident at the Stockholm facility. But the men dismiss her concerns, asserting confidence in the Japanese facility and downplaying the effectiveness of their U.S. location. They drive away on a golf cart, seemingly unfazed. Transitioning to a town, Dana and Jules, two girls, chat about school life while Jules's boyfriend, Kirk, barges in, playfully throwing a football. The ball is caught by Holden, who's there to meet Dana. The group, planning a weekend getaway to a lakeside cabin, prepares to depart. Their friend Marty arrives, riding in his car and smoking from a sophisticated marijuana device that doubles as a travel mug. Meanwhile, back at the building, Citizen and Hadley monitor the group's activities through screens. They've been subtly dosing the youngsters with drugs, yet their motive remains unclear. As the group heads toward the cabin, they stop for gas and directions, encountering Mordecai, an odd and unfriendly man who warns them about reaching the cabin easily, but hints at difficulties returning. The interaction turns confrontational when Mordecai becomes aggressive, insulting Jules and provoking tension before they resume their journey, eventually passing through a U-shaped tunnel in the mountains en route to the cabin. A bird attempts to fly over the ravine but tragically gets electrocuted by an invisible barrier. Meanwhile, within the building, Hadley answers a ringing phone. It's Mordecai, warning them about the college kids heading to the cabin. Mordecai hints at how close they were to disrupting plans, urging caution. Putting Mordecai on speakerphone angers him, leading to an abrupt hang-up, amusing Hadley and Citizen. As the group arrives at the cabin and starts unpacking, Holden in his room discovers an unsightly painting. Removing it, he uncovers a hidden window into Dana's room, unintentionally witnessing her undressing due to a reflective mirror. Rushing to Dana, they swap rooms, enabling Dana to see Holden through the window, sparking mutual interest. Back at the monitoring facility, the observers place bets on the outcome for the cabin's occupants, with Hadley particularly keen on a merman outcome. New Agent Truman is taken aback by their behavior. While experienced Agent Lin empathizes with his unease, the group engages in a game of truth or dare, leading to playful antics. Curiosity leads them to the basement upon hearing mysterious noises. They encounter peculiar items. Kurt attempts a puzzle ball, Jules tries on a wedding dress, and Holden is captivated by a ballerina jewelry box. An unexpected turn occurs as those covertly watching the friends from a concealed location grow unusually quiet and focused. Dana discovers a diary in the basement, reading a Latin phrase aloud. The diary details a girl hurt by her father, and the Latin incantation warns of their return if spoken aloud. Marty was against sharing it, but Dana went ahead and read the forbidden content. Unexpectedly, outside the lodge, the deceased family described in the journal returned as undead creatures. Meanwhile, at the facility, those who had selected country-style zombies in a bet, comprising the maintenance crew and the new attendant Hadley, emerged victorious. Hadley felt let down because he had hoped to witness a mythical merman. Back at the cabin's living room, peculiar behavior from Jules and Kurt caught attention. Jules engaged in suggestive dancing, while Kurt displayed hostility towards his girlfriend. Marty observed these actions, but the rest of the group brushed them off. Later, Kurt and Jules wandered off for intimacy, influenced by a peculiar mist. However, their liaison was interrupted by the sudden appearance of zombies who attacked them. Jules suffered a hand injury, while Kurt, stabbed in the shoulder, narrowly escaped. Sadly, Jules got captured, beheaded, prompting Kurt's hasty return to the cabin. Following Jules's demise, Hadley and the others uttered what seemed like a prayer. Hadley then operated a mechanism, causing blood to stream onto a tablet bearing a woman's image. Tremors shook the ground, and Marty heard a voice in his head while witnessing Kurt battling a zombie. They rushed inside and secured the door. Kurt informed Marty about Jules's death, leading them to fortify the house and stick together. Despite someone's advice to split up, only Marty registered the warning. He urged everyone to remain together, but his plea fell on deaf ears. Dana Holden and Marty retreated to their individual rooms, which locked automatically behind them. At the facility, the people couldn't fathom why Marty wasn't complying with their desires, fearing he might disrupt everything. In his room, Marty accidentally shattered a lamp and stumbled upon a camera, validating his suspicions about the place. While trying to investigate further, a zombie burst through the window, attacking him. A fierce struggle ensued, leaving Marty injured and dragged away amidst sorrowful sounds echoing. The facility dwellers rejoiced, believing Marty wouldn't sabotage their plans anymore. Nonetheless, they remained puzzled as to why their methods didn't affect him. They realized they missed a spot where he stashed his pot, 
explaining his immunity. Suddenly, a chilling occurrence unfolded. Blood filled the silhouette of a partygoer, triggering ground tremors. Meanwhile, a zombie attempted to invade Dana's room through the window. Holden, in the adjacent room, heard the commotion and shattered the glass partition, pulling Dana into safety. Together in Holden's room, they discovered a hidden door in the floor leading to a basement room, the same place the father had mentioned from the diary. When they attempted to leave, they found the door locked. In a sudden turn, a zombie discovered them, fatally injuring Holden. Dana valiantly fought off the zombie while Kurt, from the other side, managed to unlock the door. Seeking refuge, they all rushed inside an RV, but noticed a blood-covered handprint on the vehicle's exterior as they drove toward the tunnel. During their journey, Hadley realized that the individuals assigned to detonate the tunnel hadn't carried out their task. Both Hadley and a citizen endeavored to rectify this error. As the RV entered the tunnel, it began to collapse. Swiftly reversing, they narrowly escaped the collapsing tunnel, averting a catastrophe. Kurt, spotting a dirt bike in the RV, resolves to seek help by attempting a daring jump over a ravine. However, he collides with an unseen obstacle, resulting in his demise. Blood forms the shape of a jock on the ground, a grim testament to the tragic accident. Dana and Holden witness Kurt's fate and realize Marty had been telling the truth all along. They head back to the cabin, seeking an escape route. Unfortunately, Holden meets a fatal end when stabbed in the head and the RV careens into a lake. Shockingly, a hidden zombie within the RV emerges, attacking Dana. Despite a fierce struggle, Dana manages to flee through the roof hatch, swimming to a nearby pier. However, the relentless zombie pursues her, initiating another assault. Meanwhile, at the facility, celebrations ensue due to the perceived success of the night. They discover that the sacrificial requirement of a virgin might not be necessary for their plan, which is crucial given the failures at other sites globally. Amidst the champagne toast, a ringing red phone interrupts the festivities, bringing tense news. They realize a breach in the rules. Someone survived. If Dana perishes before the others, their plan collapses. As Dana faces a dire situation, Marty emerges, rescuing her by fiercely battling the zombie until it falls into the water. Fleeing into the woods, pursued by zombies, Marty leads Dana to a grave where he begins digging. Dana is puzzled until Marty opens a concealed door, and both tumble into a room just as the zombies close in. Marty reveals that he sabotaged the tunnel explosion by tinkering with wires and discovered an elevator. Suspecting someone unleashed the zombies upon them, they decide to utilize the elevator, finding numerous other compartments containing bizarre creatures linked to various objects. In the cabin's basement, Dana has an epiphany, realizing they were given the choice of how they would meet their demise, unwittingly selecting the zombie scenario. While exploring the facility with Marty, those monitoring them grow increasingly agitated, realizing they've progressed too far. Determining Marty as the primary troublemaker, they scheme to eliminate him first, pinpointing their location within the elevator and dispatching a guard to execute them. However, the plan backfires when the guard becomes preoccupied by a zombie corpse in the elevator. Seizing the opportunity, Dana and Marty overpower the guard and exit the elevator, continuing their escape. A woman's voice emanates through a speaker, expressing sympathy yet reaffirming the desire for Dana and Marty's demise. More guards armed with guns appear, prompting Dana and Marty to flee and seek refuge in a control room for the elevators housing the monstrous creatures. Dana discerns the control panel's function, allowing them to monitor which elevators contain the creatures. Amidst the chaos, soldiers armed to the teeth launch an assault, propelling Dana and Marty into frenzied button pressing on the control panel. Suddenly, alarms blare throughout the facility, and a horde of terrifying monsters begins pouring out of the elevators, overwhelming the soldiers. The monstrous entities overrun the building, indiscriminately attacking and slaying the facility's workers in a frenzy of violence and chaos. Marty and Dana found themselves cornered by the rampaging monsters. Amidst the chaos, they discovered a breach in the wall, caused by the turmoil in the main control room where the monsters wreaked havoc. Tragically, the monsters claimed the lives of Hadley, Lynn, and Truman. Hadley's final moments afforded him a glimpse of the mermaid he longed to see before meeting his demise. Citizen, amidst the turmoil, managed to find an escape route through a stone hallway, but was unexpectedly stabbed by Dana, resulting in his fatal injury. As Citizen lay dying, he urged Dana to end his suffering. Anxious and hesitant, Dana received a gun from Marty, procured from a fallen guard. Marty and Dana ventured into a room adorned with drawings depicting all the individuals involved. 
Dana deduced the significance of five stone tablets, each representing one of them. Dana, Marty, Holden, Kurt, and Jules. Realization dawned upon them that the harrowing events they experienced were part of an ancient ritualistic sacrifice. The director, whose voice they recognized from the loudspeaker, appeared, revealing the purpose of the place and their intended roles. She explained the ritual's ancient origins, admitting that even she and her colleagues were unaware of its entirety. This ritual was performed globally to appease ancient malevolent deities who once ruled the earth. Furthermore, she cautioned that the terrifying creatures they encountered were mere shadows compared to these ancient deities. Standing near a pit, Dana and Marty comprehended that this was where the old gods lay dormant, stirring a profound sense of dread within them. In the dire revelation from the director, she elucidates that the ritual is crucial to maintain the slumber of the ancient gods. Five sacrificial individuals are required, followed by representatives of distinct archetypes, the scholar, the athletic one, the silly one, and finally, the virgin. The sequence of their demise isn't significant, who must be the first, and the virgin, who must be the last alive. The director emphasizes that the gods determine the virgin's fate. Failing to execute the sacrifice correctly risks awakening the old gods, resulting in catastrophic global devastation. Marty grapples with the concept of resorting to such violence to save the world, questioning its worthiness. When Dana aims a gun at him, it deeply wounds Marty emotionally. Though conflicted, Dana recognizes the gravity of the situation, reluctant to witness the world's end. Amidst this turmoil, a werewolf suddenly emerges, attacking Dana. In the chaos, Marty seizes the gun, fending off the werewolf, forcing it to retreat. The director attempts to eliminate Marty, but a zombie girl from the diary intervenes, dispatching the director instead. Seizing the moment, Marty kicks both the director and the zombie girl into the pit housing the sleeping gods. With a momentary respite, Dana and Marty reconcile, pondering the impending cataclysm while sharing a joint. However, the ground begins to convulse and fracture. The cabin in the woods trembles, and a colossal hand bursts through the ground as the first of the old gods ascends to the surface, heralding a momentous and ominous arrival.